Little Snodgrass, and welcome to this episode of The World Around Us. We're doing our, this, um, this is the last, this is the last um, heat exchange, heat transfer, phase change lab that we're, that we're going to do. And this is gonna be pretty much uh, a virtual lab. Uh, if, you, if you wanna do it virtually, you're gonna be uh, collecting the data. If you're gonna do it in class, the setup and procedures are pretty simple. And um, so we're gonna, we'll have two parts to this video. We'll have the, the setup, and then we'll have the data collection and just like a real quick discussion of the results. Before we do that, we need to set up the concept, what's going on here. So what we have is a beaker in which is water and ice, and the temperature is zero degrees, which we would expect because the ice is present. It is distilled water. So the, one of the standards for this state is to graphically show phase change, how as energy goes in, the temperature doesn't change, the phase change occurs. And then once the phase change has occurred, the temperature will begin to go up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna graph that. We're gonna have the, the time as one axis and the temperature as another axis. And, and so um, by time, what we're actually meaning is the amount of energy that has gone in. Because we're gonna assume that over any one minute period, the Bunsen burner puts out very close to the same amount of energy. So some bazillion joules or whatever go out uh, one minute, the next minute, very close to that same amount is gonna go out the next minute, all right? So our, our graph on the x-axis will be time, but it also is amount of energy that went into the system. The temperature is the responding variable, responding to the amount of energy. How does the temperature of the, of the liquid change? So we're gonna record that uh, every 60 seconds. We got a, a stopwatch, a piece of paper, and a pencil. I'm gonna record the temperature uh, as time goes on. That's pretty much the setup and, and the explanation. What is interesting is our system is not a closed system. So we have heat from the Bunsen burner going into the apparatus, including the beaker, and the ice in the water, and the thermometer, and the air around the beaker. So as the temperature approaches room temperature, the air molecules are actually adding energy to the system. Once the system gets above room temperature, then it is gonna to begin to give energy off to the atmosphere. Now, we're probably not gonna notice a whole lot in the, the zero to 20 range. It's going to, we're gonna cross that range relatively quickly. But from 20 to however high it gets, we're, we're gonna see at the end, more and more of the energy is escaping, plus there's gonna be some randomization of, of uh, average kinetic energy in the water, some of those molecules are gonna jump up into the, the gaseous state and take energy with them. So as we get closer and closer to the boiling point, we're gonna, we're gonna see that the, uh, the temperature change, the rate of temperature change actually uh, goes down. So the slope of the line will actually become less. I have a stirring thing. You don't never stir with a glass thermometer because they're very fragile. Uh, I have a little, it is a little scupula spatula thing and I'm going to, I'm going to stir. I have my thermometer set to the top of the, of the liquid because ice floats and what we're hoping to see is that the, the temperature change is going to be very, very slight until all the ice melts uh, or until the majority of the ice melts. Um, there are going to be different if you had like five thermometers, you could probably put them in and get different temperatures. That may be an interesting, an interesting demonstration at some point. The, the energy is, is not instantly mixed within the system. So I'm gonna keep the thermometer at the top where the ice will be located. Um, there, there will be some localized hotter, hotter zones at the bottom. We're gonna just, we're just gonna uh, allow that to work its way up naturally. I will stir periodically in order to, um, to try to even out the temperature within the solution. That's it for the setup, all right? So you have a Bunsen burner, stand, beaker, thermometer, timer, something to record your time on, and uh, try, to keep, try to keep the temperature in the water uh, even throughout. That, that's, pretty much, that's pretty much the setup. If you're doing this in class, that's it. Go, get to work, go do the lab. If you're gonna do it virtually, I'm gonna put the data over here as I collect it. And I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna sit here for the whole however long it takes and, and, and make you watch 
every step of the way, but if the first couple of minutes and then we'll skip ahead and, and get data towards the end. So let, let's get started with that. I'm gonna light the Bunsen burner. Some may argue this is the most exciting part. These things, my, my students love to play with these things. Bunsen burner's lit, timer started, initial temperature zero, time zero. We'll let this, we'll let this roll. See what happens. If you're doing the lab virtually, start collecting data. If you're still watching the video, six seconds has passed. Temperature still zero. I'm gonna stir slightly. I'm knock some ice out. Fortunately, mass is not part of this demonstration. That, just put that back in there. We're not actually calculating the, the joules. We're just gonna watch as the temperature changes or doesn't change as time goes on. At 30 seconds, there's still a lot of ice and the temperature is still zero. The, the accuracy of the thermometers is one of the limits in this lab. Um, in, a previous, in a previous lab, the uh, uh, calculating the initial temperature of the ice, misreading the thermometer by one degree can throw the results off by a, a huge, huge amount. Um, we, we did a, a spreadsheet to sort of analyze some of that in, uh, in uh, honors chemistry class. One minute has passed and I have a temperature of zero. So all of that energy that went in from the Bunsen burner did nothing to change the temperature, but it did change the phase of the ice. If we were doing joules per gram and rounding, it's 334, 334 joules per gram. So for each joule, for each 334 joules of energy that went in, one gram of ice turned into water. And the temperature stayed the same. And this is this is a uh, sort of what the, the standard of graph this, the, the standard is hoping that that will be the takeaway from this. I'm at two minutes and we could argue that the temperature is one or zero. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with zero at two minutes. And we are, we are seeing a reduction in the amount of ice. We are seeing a reduction in the amount of ice. We're still putting a lot of energy into melting ice. So now we can, we can sort of uh, look at the system as being the water, the glass beaker, the flame, and the air are all melting the ice. Because the water at three minutes, the water has reached I'm calling that two degrees. So now the water is adding its energy. So this water at the bottom of the beaker is, is hotter than the ice. So it is adding its energy to the ice. And the Bunsen burner is continuing to add energy to the whole system. And the air is adding energy. So we have the ice melting at a, at a more and more rapid rate. And we are up to five at 345, four minutes in 10 seconds, four minutes will have passed. Four minutes, we're, we're gonna call it, um, we'll call it, we'll call it five degrees at four minutes. Still a lot of ice, but mostly water now. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of joules that's gonna to need to go into melting the ice. Even as the temperature of the water continues to go up, we're, we're still expending a, a lot of energy in heating up and melting the ice. There is five minutes and the temperature is seven. Right, we just passed the, the seven minute mark. The temperature of the mixture, is, of, the mixture of ice and water is, is 10 degrees. I'm gonna do something just while we're waiting on the next minute to pass. I'm gonna put this thermometer down towards the bottom of the of the uh, flat of the beaker and see what the temperature reading is. So I'm very close to the bottom. 
So at the bottom, with just a little bit of ice floating at the top, I have a temperature reading of 17. And at the top, the temperature reading is 14. So I've got uh, 18 and 14 at the eight minute mark. Not that, that this doesn't really factor into our experiment, but I just thought I'd be curious to find out. At eight minutes, the temperature is 14. Most of the ice is gone. There's just a few pieces of ice at the top. They are still taking energy out of the water and from the, the um, atmosphere, still adding a little bit to this because it's just a little bit below room temperature, the, the system that we're measuring here. Nine minutes, we are at 19 degrees. So just take a quick look at the early data. We went uh, 0, 0, 0, 2. We had a jump of 2, and then a jump of 3, then a jump of 2, then a jump of 1, then a jump of 2. Then, with most of the ice gone, we jumped from 10 to 14, from 14 to 19, and then the 10-minute mark is coming up. We are well into the 20, 20 something at this point. So I think we're going to begin to see a more uh, rapid, uh, uh, the, the slope of the line, which is the rate of temperature change, the slope is going to um, go up for a minute. At 11 minutes, we are at 28, 28, at uh, 12 minutes, no, 11 minutes. I'm continuing to stir just to try to keep the temperature of the water as uniform throughout the beaker as possible. Um, we are now giving energy off from the water into the atmosphere and from the beaker. So some of the energy from the Bunsen burner is now going into the air around us, coming up on 12 minutes at 33 degrees. 36 at 13, 14 minutes, 40 degrees, 44 degrees at 15 minutes. So at, at this point, the, the, the water and the beaker and the thermometer and it are all 20 degrees above room temperature. So they are now putting energy out into, you can you know feel the heat coming off the, the beaker and things. Um, coming up on 16 minutes. So my, my expectation is that we're gonna begin to see a sort of a flattening of the temperature change. It's gonna begin to, the, the slope of the line, at 16 minutes we're at 40, 47. see a flattening of that line. 17 minutes, uh, we'll call it 51, uh, 50, we'll call it. we're at 54 degrees at 18, 54 at 18. If you're interested in sources of error, um, you may have seen when I took the stirrer out, it has some, I fling some water off of it. So I'm actually changing the mass of the water by drops amount. Uh, which would mean that the energy going in would have a greater effect because the mass went down. Um, but probably nothing that we can record on these thermometers. It's 19 minutes at 58 degrees, 58. All right, 23 minutes, 71 degrees, 71. All right, fast forward to the end of the lab. Over here is, is the data. Um, all the data that was collected, it'll, it'll come up in slides minute by minute. Um, 40 minutes, and, and we reached the, the boiling point. So the, the point that we were going for was to, to look at how energy in the system um, affects the phase change, the temperature change, and how the phase change occurs absorbing energy without changing the temperature. So if we, if we look at the, the data, the first uh, few minutes, 
uh, the temperature didn't change at all. And then we started getting the pockets of water uh, around it, and we, we saw uh, over a seven-minute period a temperature increase of from zero to ten. And at, at the seven-minute point, most of it had turned into water, and we began to, uh, to see a more rapid increase in temperature. So uh, from seven minutes at 10 degrees, within the next two minutes, it had nearly doubled to 19. And then uh, by the 11-minute mark, it was at 28 degrees. It had gone up very rapidly at that point. In the middle, we had a fairly steady increase as the temperature of the system got warmer. Um, it began to give off more and more energy into the air around it. And so we saw a flattening of that temperature curve. Then, at the end, as the gas started forming, the liquid becoming a gas, the energy that would have raised the temperature of the water became those, those small gas particles. And those small gas particles took the energy out and, and dispersed it into the atmosphere. Also, the air that's, that is passing in currents around the apparatus also was taking energy out of the system because the, the container and the water within it were so much hotter than room temperature. So we also saw a flattening of the curve there. So this, this is the data. This is um, the... Uh, d information for your conclusion and your discussion. So, uh, and that's pretty much it. So, uh, if you're doing this in lab, don't be surprised. Our final temperature was 97 degrees. Uh, we used distilled water, and we don't know if there were any impurities in the in the ice that would have had an effect. Uh, so we'll assume it was also distilled water that the ice, you know, bought in those ice machine packages. Um, we are also have atmospheric pressure as a factor in boiling point and inaccuracies of the thermometer. So in our data, we hit 97 at the 38 minute mark and it did not go up after that. We went through 41 minutes and uh, had no, no temperature change for four measurements in a row. So that, that is, uh, and it's, after all this talking, it is still, it's still 97 degrees. So. So that, there's the data. You can graph this, and there's a lot of things you can talk about in explaining your data, uh, explaining where the energy went and why the temperature change responded the way it did over that course of time, assuming that the Bunsen burner gave off the same amount of energy each minute. And that, that's an assumption that, that it's pretty safe to make, that uh, over a 60-second period, the amount of energy is fairly consistent coming out of the Bunsen burner. All right, a lot of, lot of numbers to graph. That should be uh, an interesting graph. You know, you can use Google Sheets and you might end up with something like this. And that makes uh, an, an interesting side skill is developing that graphing skill using Google Sheets. All right, that is all for this episode. Thank you for watching. Please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, sign up for notifications, leave me a comment, question, or suggestion, and we'll see you in the next episode. Caught that one. I was looking at that time. Bunsen burners off. No look. Eh, that's something.